everyone. This is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I thought it would be fun today to do some space dyeing with some extra dye, water, vinegar, things that I have around my kitchen. I have about maybe an inch and a half of water in my dye pot, and this is the water that I used to pre-soak some sock blanks. So it was some water, and I added two tablespoons of white vinegar to it. Um, right here, I have some Stroll fingering yarn. This fingering weight yarn is 100 grams of 75% um, superwash merino, 25% nylon yarn. This yarn is completely dry right now. And you can see that there is a lot of water in the pot. So this isn't quite going to be low immersion, um, but there's not actually the the yarn is kind of moving to um, soak up um, more of these sections. But anyway, I'm now going to heat up um, the pot um, until we get start seeing some bubbles. And then I will add our leftover dye, which is in the form of Kelly Green, Wilton's Violet, Wilton's Teal, and Wilton's Royal Blue. And these are the dyes that we used in two of the different sock blank specials recently. And so we'll, once we we're hot, we'll pour them in and see what kind of cool colors we get. These dyes each started off with a half a cup of water in between a quarter teaspoon and a half teaspoon of food coloring. So now I am going to start adding these dyes. And I still have the sponge brushes from from when I was painting my stripes. I don't have very much of the royal blue left, but I love that color. Surprisingly, I have a lot of purple left. Um, or a lot of violet, I should say. I actually used that first with one of mine, and I put, actually there was the most dye, I think, in the violet itself. But I've actually found, I don't know if you can really tell, but the reds kind of bind a bit to the foam brush. I don't know what material my foam is, but I just think that that's kind of cool that they end up being a bit stained. And here is some Wilton's Teal. Alright colors, now it's time for you to spread. And I think I might film a little bit of time lapse right now too. It has been 20 minutes since I added the yarn. And while I was filming the time lapse, I noticed something. There's a glob of dye over here in the violet section. So let's just, uh, Give that little guy some water. And also, I'm curious about how much color we have left in various sections. Okay, I see some blue there. Not very much color left there. That looks pretty clear. And we, ooh, it's warm. My finger went in the pot. Um, we still have some purple. I mean, not a lot of purple left. Although, I guess I did just add some dye. But yeah, it looks like these cleared off. Okay, there's still some green over here. Oh, you greens, blast you. <laughs> but, you know, the color just struck really fast. So I'm amazed that we're going to have as much white left as we will. But I am going to let this... Um, now that I've wiggled things around a little bit, I'm going to let this go, I think, another maybe 10 minutes. Try to dissolve that dye. There we go. Yeah, I'll let this go another 10 minutes before we remove it. And I'm not going to film any more time lapse because I'm not expecting things to move around very much now. Um, another 10 minutes has passed, and I'm now going to turn off the heat. But I'm going to leave the yarn in the pot. 
Um, the water is almost completely clear, but I don't mind the yarn having access to a little more heat. I could remove the yarn and put it in a dish so it would cool faster, but I'm not going to be able to wash this for a couple hours anyway, so I may as well leave it in the pot to cool versus getting a whole other dish um, to do this. So it's really just a, this time it's purely for convenience. Here is our space dyed yarn that is completely cool. Now I'm going to remove it and you can see that the dye bath is completely clear. Yeah, now I'm just going to start adding some cool tap water. Dump out the beginning and use some clear dish soap. Um, okay, put in a lot more than I intended, um, but it should be okay. But look at that. All of the color is in our yarn. And look at this yarn. We've got the colors did not stray very far from where I poured them. And so we've got just gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Um, the cold water is really cold, so I added um, a tint, uh, like a tiny bit of warmth. Um, this is a yarn that I think would look really cool if you re-stained it. Um, but look, we've got such pink that goes into purple, um, and paler blues, and oh, these are just some of my favorite colors in the world. But as we can see, all of our color is in the yarn, so yay! And so I'm just going to rinse out the soap, put this yarn through the solid spinner, and then hang it up to dry. Okay, maybe there's the slightest tinge of blue when I added the warm water. Um, but I'll make sure that the water runs clear. And then hang this up to dry and then share with you guys the finished dry yarn. So I know that I've talked about how when we're space dyeing yarn, colors can strike really fast. And that on these stroll fingering weight yarns, food coloring strikes incredibly fast. But check this out. The colors did not really move very much at all from where I poured the really, really concentrated dyes onto the fiber, which gave us this mixture of these really v bright and vibrant blues, greens, and teals, and then even some sections of white. There was more than enough food coloring here to dye this yarn an all over vibrant color, even after dyeing um, two other entire sock blanks with these dye mixtures. I think that this yarn is really, really interesting, and this is one that I would personally like to see reskained. So maybe I'll have to do a live stream with that at some point. Um, but um, when we compare this to some of the space dyeing we've done with the Easter egg dye tablets, and where we've seen how much those spread out over the yarn, I am pretty amazed that um, the colors ended up being so localized here. Um, and I think that it's really pretty. And I think that I should also do some more um, lower immersion space dyeing of yarn and not just roving. Um, although if this was roving, I would love to spin it up. So maybe I should replicate this with some roving sometime. We had enough food coloring to dye 300 grams of sock yarn. Um, these colors are vibrant and really, really fantastic no matter what technique we used. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching this dyeing video. If you wanna be notified of when I release new videos or do live streams, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release new fun dyeing videos every week. Thank you so much for watching.